director and fellow toastmasters uh, thank you for providing me this opportunity uh, this has been a great honor so a bit i know uh, flo already talked about it but i thought i'll reiterate some of the things i was the pathways guys and as you can see i was amid the fire multiple times as in the first flyer and uh, it was not easy to say <laughs> but we went through it and i hope we all are making great progress the breakthrough came for me in on 22nd june 2019 so few weeks before our current pqd scott brown reached out to me that would you like to take a breakout session uh, in our tli and talk anything except pathways and that's when we talked about club culture the session was amazing uh, i had by one of my friend toastmaster bess who had an improv session i was on cloud 9 i did not know how to contain this until two days after i got this email my visa was undergoing rejection and it was rejected i had to leave the country within a week so from cloud 9 i went to cloud minus 9 so my house which used to have pretty happening parties actually became a ruckus like this the sad part was my wife and daughter was not there in the country my mom was undergoing some heart operation so i went a lot in that period and on 3rd july 2019 just before america's independence day i had to leave the country so i recorded this message on the airport i hope to share this good morning leaders of district 11 the audible it is july 3 2019 about 10:45 am est or 9:45 am cst i am at chicago airport terminal 5 waiting for my flight to india at noon last one and half weeks has been a uh, crazy for me to say the least uh, i've gone through a lot but i still firmly believe that probably god has a bigger plan for me and uh, i am very very hopeful that i'll be back soon but before i go i have one important thing to do which i'm doing right now is to express my gratitude towards all the leaders of district 11 i came in 2017 from india and had no idea how toastmaster works in district 11 but i'm so grateful to all the leaders here who really made me comfortable uh, made me to what i am uh, i also wanted to thank some of the individual and i'll start with probably angela green who uh, gave me the opportunity to be a pathways guide uh, pathways had been a pathway being a pathways guide has been a transforming journey for me uh, i think i've really gone to the next level once i became the pathways guide started going to different clubs taking session and then also participating in tlis fall conferences spring conferences uh, also i've got so many other leaders mike claxton lou bagnell nancy dig crystal serena hirock my fellow pathways guide and also all right i think that's enough for you to understand what emotions uh, what feelings i was going through and as i said in the in the video i had the dream that i would be back to district 11 and i did not know it's going to come with within a year so here i am virtually in front of you and 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 i want to acknowledge that you no know, when i came to district 11 in 2017 i came with four letters after my name and that was cccl but when i went back to india i went with three letters distinguished toastmaster and that was all because of the opportunities provided by my clubs my district my area and division so a heartfelt thanks and heartfelt gratitude to all of the leadership to district 11 thank you so much my next journey started i went back to india i was uh, part of my original club for few more months and then as the destiny said i had another opportunity 
and this time I'm now part of District 91. This is my window where I see the mornings and evening and it's amazing view here. I've been learning a lot over here. This is another progress for me. So this year I was able to reach to uh, as the first runner up in the division contest. And uh, this was all before this Corona spread ha happened. Now, a lot of people who are not Toastmasters ask me, why do you join Toastmaster? Why do you renew your Toastmaster membership? You actually pay to go Toastmasters. It doesn't pay you. And that is my answer to these guys. You can buy a lot of things from Toastmaster, but you cannot get these handwritten you know, appreciation. These, uh, the best mentor was made by one of my mentees, Taiba, and I cannot thank her enough from the bottom of my heart what I felt about that. So this is my reason to be a Toastmasters and I hope to continue it for many more years. Now, I want you all to go to the chat window and type yes if you ever feel challenged when you are in difficult time, when you feel like there is a problem and you are not able to pursue your passion. So please type in, in the chat window, yes, why? Thank you. All right. So today I'm going to share some of my learnings since I've gone through a lot lately and I thought I've tried to find my things that works for me. And if I share some of the things you might be explore on your own, some of the things would help you. Uh, so I'm going to share some of my findings, some of my learnings, and hopefully you'll be able to apply when you are trying to pursue your passion and you are amid difficult times. Number one, mentoring now when i say mentoring it's actually two part of it and the first part is get mentor i have had the opportunity and privilege to get so many mentors across the world and these are only the mentors with whom i could get exclusive photos but there are so many mentors and i i owe a lot of my success to my mentors i would say i i do i have not done more than two to three percent and 90 to 97% of my success lies because of the mentoring they have done because of the guidance they have provided. And that is where the second part becomes very effective. When you get mentored, it's your way. I say it, people say pay back. I say pay forward to be mentor of someone else. You have got all the knowledge, all the direction. Now it is time for me uh, to pass on. So these are my, uh, these were my three mentees when I was back in TCS Matri Club. Uh, coincidentally, uh, last week, uh, my, my mentee uh, Taiba, she actually won the area contest and she has been doing a lot of progress. I'm glad to have Gursimar joining us from India. Uh, so first thing is to get a mentor, get the learning, but then also don't keep it with you, pass it on and be a mentor. Too. Now, Second learning that I had is connecting with friends. Now, when I put this slide, you might be thinking that I'm going to ask, do the cliche thing. This is what everybody talks about in Facebook, connect with people, connect, do WhatsApp call, do Facebook call, but I'm going to make it more interesting. Connect with non-human friends. I hope this would make you interesting. So I've got some new non-human friends and some reconnected with old non-human friends. And the first one is getting back to the old friends. I love to read books. And during this difficult times, I've got a lot of opportunity to actually go back to books. These are the books actually I finished in last couple of months. And now I'm actually repeating the third book, Mindset, which you see by Dr. Carol Dweck. And it's an amazing book. So I actually have finished about, you can see one third again. I don't know whether it's visible or virtual background, but this is the time to actually go back to basic, go back to books. I've ordered a couple more books and I'm loving it. So it, it is time for you if you have you no know, ample opportunity to go back. Now, when you have old friends, there's also an opportunity to get new friends. My new friends is podcast. Now, many of you would know what podcast is. I'm not going to explain that, but it's more of an audio format of a YouTube where you actually can listen to. So my couple of my favorite podcasts, one is Unforgettable Presentation by Darren LaCroix and Mark Brown. 
past world champion of public speakers and the other one is the tony robbins podcast so i do not miss any episode of them but there are so many more and i love uh, listening about the dave ramsey so financial p the brandon richard the high performance and this could be something for you to explore and that really gives you energy and inspiration to pursue your passion now if you notice in the slide i put b1 because there is another new friend which is the audiobooks my favorite audiobook is audible and i've got i finished about a dozen of audiobooks in last uh, year or so uh, two of them the five second road by mel robbins and the secret by ronda brand i finished three times and i'm actually trying to repeat the seven habits of highly effective people this is the time to go back and get those and i i get so much of energy i thought it would be a good opportunity for you also to explore these new friends trying out new things we all have those times that when we feel like you no know, we are not doing right and actually that is the right time to do new things uh, these are the three things that i have done in last month or so so first as you see is i'm doing an instagram live session with my friends every week uh, as a matter of fact i'm doing one with dtm geeta nan uh, she is now part of district 11 tomorrow uh, where i bring the guest i talk i talk to them about their journey their learnings their failures and how are they coping up and and try to spread some positivity within the world and in this process i learn a lot the second was a combined meeting uh, so since i was a member of multiple clubs one day i i had a dream that how beautiful it would be to have the special combined meeting with all the three clubs from three geographies and and i reached out to people and people were so considerate and helpful we had a special successful meeting uh, in fact before start of the session i passed on the link uh, DTM Mac Cleston past district governor actually joined that and she gave a wonderful session about how to attend table topics how to attempt table topics and and all all the people all the international audience loved that the third thing that i've tried is to uh, work on my youtube channel i've been working on to get more subscribers and let me tell you it is very difficult nobody wants to subscribe to your youtube channel but nevertheless i've been trying to upload more videos get more people to watch them and these are the new things which gives me energy to pursue my passion of you know, getting more communication skills getting more leadership skills number 4th journaling journaling if you read about any high performance leader you'll find out that the one thing that they tell you is to journal your thoughts we all go through different emotions at different point of time and journaling actually helps you get it out of your mind and helps you bring the high performance mindset into uh, i have been journaling now for a couple of months and uh, at times i had some personal challenges and i wrote it on the journal and i felt relieved so i feel if we can apply this journaling this would really be helpful i was listening to some podcasts and it has been scientifically proven that when you time out something on the journal it it helps you relieve the stress and that way you can actually analyze your thoughts and see into if you are getting towards depression or any other things that you don't want to and if you require you can seek professional help so this is my new ritual so my new ritual is i i am trying to wake up at 5 am let me be first uh, be honest today i did not follow this ritual because i slept at around 2 o'clock in the night and uh, i wake up pretty late but on most of the days about 5 days a week i'm trying to fo follow this morning rituals waking up 5 am having a black coffee and book finishing up 30 to 45 minutes of that writing the journal summarizing what happened a day before and how how, how was i feeling are there any learnings listening to these podcasts and i've also undertook learning french i wanted to attend the international convention this year which i think is going to be next year so i think i've got some more uh, time to learn french but i am i am uh, trying to invest some 10 minutes every day now by the time it, this all happens before about 7 730 so by the time most of the people wake up 
it gives me a sense of accomplishment it gives me a lot of positivity that no i am ahead of the game and i can do much more so the point that i'm trying to put here is this is my morning ritual it may or may not work for you but it is time for you to experiment with your morning ritual find out what works for you what does not work for you i've also learned that there is something called evening ritual or winding up ritual that people follow uh, before going to bed i have practically not done that but if it, that works for you please do that i've also learned a quick tip which i want to give is we all have this amazing invention i hope yeah now you can see this phone and if we reduce the screen time especially in the morning by an hour so once you wake up in the morning if you do not watch all the notification all the cat and dog videos and everything it helps you psychologically a uh, lot of people including me had some issues in waking up uh, so one quick tip again i have is put your alarm clock or your phone about 6 to 8 feet away so that when the alarm rings you actually have to wake up put go on your feet and then snooze or uh, dismiss the alarm and once you do that your mind actually understand that you have this is time to wake up and mo in most of the times you will be able to wake up this has really helped for me and I, in mel robbins in 5 second rule say that you put it in the bathroom i'm not going to go to that level to put my phone in the bathroom but at least putting it 6 to 8 feet away uh, gives me enough energy to uh, wake up and then follow my morning ritual so schedule your calendar what you see is my office cum personal calendar it's a very funny story uh, when i joined my first company a uh, lot of people used to mock that you no know, there are people who actually schedule their pet walking grocery shopping or even talking to their in-laws in their calendar and we used to make a lot of fun i admit i have done that i have done that mocking but over the time i realized that when i talk to leaders uh, whether it's office leaders whether it's those must leaders and across any time i said that can we have the meeting they will say let me check my calendar and then i did some more research and found out that now if you put something on your calendar it helps you get the burden out of your mind so if, for example if i have a meeting today at 3 pm uh, uh, uk time i don't have to remember that over and over if i put it in my calendar i can always go back and look at my calendar that what things are coming up with the virtual meetings i make sure that i put the zoom id and the link in the in the calendar itself so that i i don't have to go back to my email and find that out this thing has helped me tremendously to be more productive more effective and i i'm pretty sure that you no know, if you apply this would be helpful for you as well now the last thing that i want to talk about and this is not for every day uh, passion this is about if you have got some project so remember the tli session i was talking about Uh, when scott told me that we, you need to talk something about culture and i had no clue i got a big card big uh, board and wrote club culture and then i tried applying mind mapping what exactly would club, club culture uh, consist of so these are all the different things i could think about and put it on different colors different fonts and then i tried to uh, uh, make sure that it, co it becomes a coherent message and it it synchronizes so it's a uh, i got to know it's a very psychological technique a scientific technique uh, the second is my favorite which is the post is notes in fact now i am carrying about three to four different notes with the virtual background it does look crazy but yeah so the second picture that you see is uh, i'm trying to work on a book of my own journey uh, trying to put something on my wall that you no know, i can help organize my thoughts and and get into a book writing mode so i think putting it something on different post it notes and putting it on a wall on a, on a board something helps me organize uh, so if you undergo any project anything which is of high caliber these are some of the things that can help you there i know there are some software i think mind mister is one of them uh, which helps you do it virtually or through softwares i have not done it personally uh, but if it works for you please go for it so 
in summary if i say these are the seven tricks if you want to pursue your passion find and be a mentor connect with non human friends along with your human friends which is books podcast audio books always keep trying out new things have some journals write some journals find out your morning rituals what works for you and or your evening ritual or winding up ritual schedule things on your calendar to make your mind easy and last is apply mind mapping techniques now uh, i am now open to any question before we get on to the last uh, uh, second last slides and uh, i thought it would be a good opportunity so if we have any question please uh, put in in the comment section and if anybody has a question that they would like to have verbally we can have you unmute your microphone to ask Harry Tesh it's Scott Hi Scott yeah really good stuff i have a question for you about mind mapping how do you personally find mm -hmm. transitioning what you've mind mapped into actionable plans how do you do that personally great question so i think the best example was about the the tli session the the mind mapping technique says that our mind does not work in the sequential or parallel manner for example you have powerpoint in slides and things like that so what i do personally is put everything on that and that is the reason you can see uh, if i go back to the previous slide uh, it is a messed up slide to say but then you have to deduct information that what will be valuable for my audience what would be that will serve them so if i remember the session i thought that it would be very interesting to have some audience engagement and that's when i brought bess to do some improv session and we had few scenarios i also thought about if i am visiting a club what would something that would help me align to the club culture so these were different thoughts and then it got converted into different slides and then i had to put it in logical sequence and uh, get that probably reviewed by someone uh, and that helped me does that answer your question thank you good stuff thanks harsh Harish, I've got a question for you. Sure. You mentioned the mentors and being a mentee. What is one of the things from a Toastmasters specific standpoint that mm -hmm. a mentor has taught you that you make sure to pass along or, or pay forward to any mentee that you have? Sure. I think there are so many things that I've learned from my mentors, but if I have to take one thing. i would say that uh, letting go of entitlement mm -hmm. so one of the one of the mentors that i had in back in india his name is tarun bhargav he have achieved so many things in life uh, he is about to become a distinguished toastmaster he was a division director he is a certified coach he is a 20 plus years of management experience but when you talk to that person you will feel like he's like me and he is not talking about any entitlement uh, we have another person uh, warren in pioneer 17 he has been toastmaster for 50 plus years can you imagine 50 plus years in toastmaster his age is 90 plus and when you talk to that person you will feel like he is something like me and i can always learn so the getting away from the sense of entitlement is one of the main important thing that i have learned and i've tried to pass it on so one other thing that i do is generally not tell to any of the club members that i am a dtm unless specifically asked because when you put this three letters word after you people think that no you are entitled you need to be given additional focus i do not like that so uh, the sense of entitlement is something which i am trying to get, avoid and that have learned from my mentors and pass it on to my mentees thank you hair touch great answer uh, we have uh, jennifer uh, has her hand raised uh, Would you like to unmute yourself and ask a question? Thank you. Thank you so much. This is a lot of information and I know I've used some of these techniques in the past. I kind of was I've had a recent conversation with a friend regarding lists. I was wondering if you have opinions on lists, if they're hindering or encouraging. Uh 
Thanks, Jennifer. Can you elaborate what exactly the list you're talking about? When I look forward to working towards a goal, I often develop lists for myself. And sometimes I get the feeling that they can be a little hindering and other times motivating. Do you think that's more of a personal thing? I just wondered your opinion on using lists as far as trying to incorporate that on your day and getting things done. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for explaining. And let me give my take on that. Uh, I think uh, I would say it depends on uh, project to project, assignment to assignment. Uh, if I am about to give a session like this or something like that, if I put a list, probably it may not be so helpful because I need to go back to the uh, from the audience perspective. But since I'm a portfolio manager, I get a lot of tasks that need to be done. And if I sort it down and break down into smaller chunks, or for in this case, I had the combined meeting. So I had to put that project management hat and put sort it out into different tasks and list uh, that helps. So I think uh, the answer would be that depends on case to case. If it is something which is more creative in nature, I would probably not typecast that to put it within a time frame, within a list frame. But if it, it is something which is more structured and we know what is supposed to happen, what is output, I would definitely put some list and task assigned to that so that I am able to better track and lead it to uh, closer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Other questions? We'll monitor our chat window. Mm -hmm. Haritosh, I have another question for you. Mm -hmm. And with regard to this uh, pandemic and this time that we're in, and eventually we hope that, that things will pass and, and the, there will be a you know, rainbow at the end of, of the storm or, or yep. that there will be a silver lining out of all of this. Um, what do you think that for us as Toastmasters that we'll have as a result of this that you know, maybe we will take forward even after uh, all of this is over. Sure, uh, very good question. Uh, I think, uh, like I was telling you before the session, the world is going to be a different world post this pandemic, which means there would be some changes in the way we operate in Toastmasters. As I love and most of us love, we would continue to have those physical meetings. But I think there will be a lot of emphasis on online meeting. Uh, and I feel that is on the right direction uh, because if I, you see industries across different uh, domain, they all are now choosing to go virtual. Uh, if I talk about my own company, they have a very uh, broad vision of having only 25% people in office and that to only for 25% of time by 2025. So I would assume that Toastmaster will also align to those vision, allow more online meetings, give give more opportunities like this uh, so that no, uh, it, it is not completely like the physical meeting, but you still get something out of it. And uh, to me, that is a value addition. So I think there would be some changes, more focus on online, uh, but yeah, the core of the Toastmaster, which is to you know, empower people to develop their communication and leadership skills would still be the same. All right, any other questions? I did not see any from our chat session. Another question that, that I had for you, Haritosh, is sure. that what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge going forward for Toastmaster members, uh, you know, for, for yourself as a Toastmaster that mm -hmm. perhaps you had not anticipated? That that's a good question, and I think uh, when we say the word challenge, it has a lot of negative connotation. And I would love to change it to a lot of opportunities would be there. Uh, I would probably see that there would be some more hesitation for members to you know for retaining the members because we have to accept that not everybody likes joining these virtual meeting and Zoom meetings, and that's gonna be some challenge. Uh, I know one of my clubs in UK is struggling to retain the 20 members. Uh, so that's going to be a challenge for the short term. Uh, but for the long term, the challenge is not going to be with the Toastmaster. And as I, as Dr. Carroll says in the Mindset book, the challenge is going to be whether you want to adapt to fixed mindset or you want to adapt to growth mindset. And the, for people who are going to change to the growth mindset, there would be an enormous opportunities 
and to be a truly international Toastmaster. Thank you, Haritosh. Do we have other questions from the group? That's a good question on the growth mindset. That was one of our goals for this year was here we grow again was our, mm -hmm. our district yep. motto or, or tagline for this year. And, you know, certainly we uh, look forward to uh, using this as an opportunity to do that. And we certainly hope that all of our Toastmasters members within the district are able to grow as a result of this opportunity that we have been presented with. Sure. So if they're, yeah, Scott, go ahead. Yes, Scott. We have a pretty good idea of what DTMs mean to us here within certain parts of the region, within certain parts of the country. What, how, what kind of weight does the DTM carry when you travel internationally, when you move internationally? So is, does it open opportunities for you when you went to India, when, um, as you move to the UK? Is it something that's universally recognized or is it something that's more regional? I think uh, DTM is universally recognized, uh, but the level of recognition varies from geographies to geographies. Uh, as per my experience, and it's, I'm going to be a little bit controversial now, uh, if it is uh, okay with everyone. Uh, when I went back to India and, and uh, I saw the attitude of people changing once they find out that, no, I am a DTM. As I said earlier, I, am, I don't try to put that DTM with my name everywhere that I go, but no. Uh, there is certainly a, a greater level of respect, uh, but uh, uh, also a sense of entitlement for people who recently become DTM. Uh, so that is there prevalent in uh, India. Uh, in UK, if I, if I say that it's been too short for me to judge, but I know people who have been Toastmaster for so many years and achieved so many uh, recognition like DTMs or Toastmaster of the Year, etc. And they are uh, pretty human to say. Uh, and uh, I did not found out that they were DTM after I did a bit of research. So I think that is still not there in UK to say. Uh, but I think we all are learning and, and it could be my personal experience and may not be the genetic experience. But uh, the one thing that I said that I'm trying to get away from the sense of entitlement and getting towards more sense of service, uh, providing service to whichever club, whichever area, division, district or international I'm part of. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? I think that may be it. Okay, good. So if it is the no more question, I wanted to share one very important slide and that truly uh, defines the service in Toastmasters. Last week, Lark Dockey, you know, past international president attended the virtual first ever virtual district in our conference. And she there informed that she's gonna be the sergeant at arm of her club. And like so many people, I was mesmerized. Here is one who reached to the pinnacle of the, of the Toastmaster International Official and she's gonna be the sergeant at arm. So we need to remember that no, why we are in Toastmaster, we are here to provide, we are here to gain, to learn, uh, leadership and communication, but after a certain point, it is more important to serve the community, serve the organization. And remember this, I love the fact I'm Toastmaster because I'm learning continuously and learning continuously about communication and leadership. Remember, the purpose helps you pursue your passion. <laughs>